The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson Chapter 5 The road leading away from the gas, the gas station and church was very poor indeed, deeply rutted and rocky. Ellen's little car stumbled and bounced, reluctant, going further to his attractive heels, where the day seemed quickly drawing to an end under the quick, under the thick, oppressive trees on either side. It did not really seem to have much traffic on this road. Ellen thought warily, turning the wheel quickly to avoid a particularly vicious rock. Ahead six miles of this would not do the car any good. The first time in hours she fought, her sister laughed. By the now they would surely know she'd taken the car and gone. But they would not would not know where they would be telling each other over incredulously they would never have suspected it of Eleanor. Would never have suspected it of myself, she thought, laughing still. Everything is different. I'm a new person very far from home. Delay their lies, no put for pretty. Present mirth have present laughter. She grasped as a rock car cracked against a rock and reeled back across the road, an ominous scraping, somewhat way above beneath. Then she gathered itself then gathered itself together vanily, resumed its dogged climb. Tree branches brushed against the windscreen. It grew steadily darker. Hill house likes to make an entrance, she thought. I wonder if the sun ever shines along here. At last, with one final effort, the car cleared a triangle, dead leaves and small branches, crossed the road, and then came the clearing by the gate of Hill House. Why am I here? she thought helplessly. At once, why am I here? The gate was tall and anonymous and heavy, set strongly into stone wall, which went off through the street trees. Even from the car, you could see the padlock and the chain that was twisted around through the bars. Beyond the gate, you could see only the road continued to turn shadowed on either side by the still dark trees. Since the gate was so clearly locked, locked and double locked and chained and barred, who, she wondered, wants so badly to get in? She made no attempt to get out of the car, but pressed the horn. The trees and the gate shuddered, but drew, drew slightly from the ground sound. After a minute, she blew the horn again, and there saw a man coming towards her from inside the gate. He was as dark and unwelcoming as the padlock. padlock. And before he moved, to walk, moved towards the gate, he peered for the bars of her, scowling. What do you want? His voice is sharp and mean. I want to come in, please. Please don't lock the gate. Who say? Why? She fluttered. I'm supposed to come in, she said at last. What for? Inspected her. Oh, oh, am I? She wondered suddenly. Is this as far as I go? Why? Who am I? She knew, of course, that she delighted. He, he was delighting at seeing his authority. So once he moved to unlock the gate, you lose the little temporary supremacy he thought he had. What superiority have I? She wondered. I'm outside the gate, after all. She would already see a losing a temper, which she did really, because she was afraid of being infectional. But he turned him away, leaving her still outside the gate, rarely and fruitlessly. She, could even, she could even perpetrate, visitate his innocence, feared to be proved later for the disagreements. Men of this as he they could grin the wide blank eyes, while your face protesting. He could not would not let her in. He planned to let her in. But could but how could he be sure? He had his orders, didn't he? He had to do what he was told. He was the one who get in trouble, wouldn't he? If he didn't if he let in someone who wasn't supposed to go to his side. She yeah, would appreciate his shrug. It's a pity of his shrug. Picturing him laughed. Perhaps the worst thing she could have done. Eyeing her, he moved back from the gate. You will come back later. He said and turned it back on the air of virtuous triumph. Listen, she said after him, still trying out to stand anger. I'm one of Dr. Van der Kuhl's rests. If you suspect him in the house, please listen to me. He turned the grin at her. The, uh, they couldn't rightly be expecting you, he said, seeing as you're the only one come so far. Do you mean there's no, no one in the house? No, I mean, I'm no one I know of. Maybe my wife getting it fixed up. 
They couldn't be there exactly expecting you. Now yeah, would that could they? She sat back against the car seat and closed her eyes. You know how she thought it was hard to get in this heaven. I suppose you know what you're asking for coming here. I suppose you, they told you back in the city. You heard everything about this place. You heard that it was right here. It was a guest of Dr. Montague. When you open these gates, I will go inside. Open them. I'm going to open them. I would just want to be sure you know what has been waiting for you in there. You've never been in there here before. Well, the family, maybe. You peer at her now, peering through the paths. You drew in face and one more barrier. After the padlock with a chain, I can't let you in until I'm sure, can I? What did you say your name was? And she sighed, in long Vance. Not one of the family then, I guess. You ever hear anything about this place? It's my chance, I suppose, she thought. Being given a last chance, to turn my car around right here and now. In front of these gates, go away from here. No one blame me. Everyone has a right to run away. She put her head out through the car window and said to the ferry, My name is Ella Friends. I'm inspecting the house. I lock these gates at once. All right, all right. Deliberately making them holy. And then she displayed a fitting key, turning it to me to open the padlock. Loosened the chain and swung the gates worth wide enough. The car came out through. Ella moved the car slowly, but evidently. Ever, she leaped to the side of the road, made a finger for a minute, did a piss. Her fifth of heat, a thick impulse, drew crossing her mind. She laughed and then stopped the car because he was coming towards us, so I speak from the inside. You won't like it, he said. You'll be sorry, I won't the good game. Out of my way, please, she said. You held me up for long enough. You think you could get anyone else to open this gate? You think they could get anyone else to open this gate? You think anyone else stay around here no longer except me and my wife? You think we can't have things just what out of the way we want them? As long as we stay around here and fix up the houses and open the gates, all the city people, you think you know everything? Please get away from my car, she dared, but admit to herself that he frightened her. The fear is she must perceive it, his nearness. Leaning against the cut side of the car was ugly. His enormous resentment puzzled her. She certainly made him open the gate for her. But he did. But he think the house and garden inside was his own. Name from Dr. Modigal's letter. Came into mind, he, she asked curiously, Are you Dudley the caretaker? Yes, I'm Dudley the caretaker, he mimicked her. Who else you think uh, would be around here? The uh, this old family retainer, she thought, proud and loyal, thoroughly unpleasant. You and your wife take care of the household alone? Who else? There's a bit of bugs, it's cursing for fame. She moved relentlessly, to felt afraid to draw away from him, too obviously, yet wanting from small motions of starting the car to make him stand inside. I'm sure you'd be able to make us very comfortable, you and your wife, she said, putting a tone of finality to her voice. Find me well. I'm very anxious to get to the house as soon as possible. She said disagreeably. Me now? And he said me he said me? I don't go around here after dark. Really satisfied with himself, he stood away from the car. And I was grateful. No boy there. A little mare starting the car under his eyes, perhaps, would keep popping out on me. All along the drive, she thought, the sneering trip of cat, yelling each time that it should be happy to find anyone willing to hang around this place until dark anyway. The show that he wasn't, she, not at all affected by the fault of the face of Dudley, getting between the trees and getting a whistle. They were annoyed to find that same tune still run through her head. Present myth have present laughter. She thought, told herself, Oh, herself crossly, as she must really make an effort to think of something else. She was sure the rest of the words must be most unsuitable to hide so stubbly from her memory, and probably wholly unsuitable to be caught singing or rival at your house. Oh, the trees occasionally between them, the hills she caught glimpse of that what must be roofs, maybe a towel of your house. They made the houses so oddly back with it when the house was built. She thought they put towers and turrets and buttresses or wooden lace on them. Even sometimes gothic spears and girl goggles. Nothing was ever left undecorated. Uh, the hill house was a tower, a secret tower, chamber, even a passageway going off in the hills, and probably used by smugglers. Although, what could smugglers find to smuggle round these lonely hills? Perhaps some comes a devilishly handsome smuggler hand. Turn the car on, last stretch of the straight drive, leading to a directly face to face with Hill House. Hill House moved spell out. Without fault, pressed her foot on the straight to stall the car, 
sat staring. House is thou. She shivered and thought. The words coming free into her mind. Heal the house is thou. It's disease. Get away from here at once.